Hey everybody, it's Dina Rico with the Creativity Cave and we are going to make a gorgeous watercolored card using the emboss resist technique. I love emboss resist. It's such a fun technique. It's an oldie but goodie, but every time it really gives a wow. I love when the color or the white Im image pops through that embossing. You can use metallic, you can use other colors, but I love white in particular with this technique. So I'm going to use the Enduring Beauty bundle from Stampin' Up. Now this is a really cool bundle because it comes with both a stamp set and dies that coordinate for it. It also comes, um, or there's also a set of decorative masks that will um, mask this image and all the little sections separately so that you can add highlights and whatnot. Um, this is a really cool decorative mask set. I'm not going to be using that today because we're watercoloring this um, and the masks wouldn't be necessary, but it's really great for ink blending. So if you like this bundle, I def definitely recommend the masks to go with it. And I'll be showing those in a future video. So you can watch for that. Now I'm um, going to be watercoloring. So I'm going to start with some Fluid 100 watercolor paper. Now Fluid 100 uh, or watercolor paper is really important. Um, this is the paper we carry. It's so important to get the beautiful look that I'm doing. If you did this in white cardstock, it would literally destroy the cardstock. It will not work. So if you've ever tried to watercolor and have not had success, that could be why is you need the, the paper. All right, now I'm going to stamp my image here. I'm using my Stamparatus. Um, a stamp positioner tool is really helpful for this. And let's just see where I had this lined up. <laughs> okay. So I just want to um, position this in here. And the reason I like using a stamp positioner is on watercolor paper. If I um, mess up or didn't get a good stamping of my image, this allows me to um, re-ink and continue, which is really helpful. Okay, so I'm going to ink this up really well with Versamark. This is the good one. I have kind of a gooey one. <laughs> that I've had for many years. <laughs> oh, and the other thing I want to do is use my embossing additions toolkit to protect that with the powder. All right, so I'm just using my sleeve to help press on here um, easier. And we're going to give this a really good press. And then we're going to emboss it with white embossing powder. And embossing is one of those techniques that I learned when I first started stamping. And it's always a wow for me still to this day. I love everything about embossing. Okay. So I'm just going to sprinkle my white powder on here. And then you can see the image show up, which is just so pretty. We want to make sure we cover every bit of it because it is a big image. And that looks fantastic. I did a good job of stamping, so yay me. Sometimes you have to give yourself a little affirmation like, I'm, I'm a good stamper. <laughs> it makes up for those times when you make big mistakes and you're like, oh my gosh, how am I professional? How am I pro a professional? Okay, so I'm going to heat this with my heat tool. And on uh, watercolor paper, it, because it's a thick paper, it does take a little longer to heat and melt all of that powder. And being the old lady that I am, uh, I had to move my glasses down so I could see this. And once your powder is melted, just move on to the next area.
Okay, I just like to double check that I got everything melted since this is a bigger image and it looks great. Now, I know you can't see this because it's white on white, but we're going to make it real pretty. In fact, you want a sneak peek? Boom. Okay, here we go. So I've got my water painters. There's um, two, two of the pointy ones in our package. I'm using the larger one for this. And I'm going to use a really fun color combination. This is one of my favorite colors for water coloring, granny apple green crushed curry with a little accent of pool party. And I think you will find that it is just gorgeous. Now I'm gonna take and squeeze my ink pad to my lid. That's my favorite way to get the color. But if you have trouble with like, you know, the hand strength to do that, you can either use reinkers in your ink pads or um, like this, I can just take a reinker and put a drop. Don't put a ton, a little goes a very long way. Um, or you can also ink them up by literally taking a block. Well, this one's kind of dirty. <laughs> Let's do a cleaner block. Here we go. This is better. Um, I'm going to take a block and I can literally press that block onto my ink pad and that picks up the ink for me. I can use that as my ink for coloring this. Okay. I'm going to start with my def or my crushed curry. I like crushed curry because it's a rich color. And what I want to do is take a little bit of water and go over my bloom. I'll do one or two at a time. I don't want to do too many just because um, if you get too much going, the water will dry. And this also depends a little bit on where you live. So if you live, you know, like in the desert and it's really, really dry, or <laughs> I live in the Midwest and um, it is very dry right now because it's winter, but today's rainy, so it's not as bad. <laughs> but you can see I'm just dropping color in and it's spreading around on my paper. And isn't that just gorgeous? And the best part is that the embossing, of course, resists the watercolor. And you see that beautiful de design start to emerge. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of continue this. Now what I want to do is have lighter and darker areas. So I'm going to take my brush, rinse it off. I like having a little um, rag that I can kind of brush my, um, my water my my the what like help whoo words are hard I can clean my brush off um I can can ch you know verify how much paint how much color is on my brush or whatever I'm struggling you, you know with okay so you can see I'm doing lighter areas out at the tips of the petals and then of course darker areas closer to the inside of the petals like that okay and there we go so isn't that gorgeous all right so now i'm going to do my next couple of blooms i'm going to take clean water by the way i do have a jar of water on my desk i find I get frustrated trying to squeeze the water or refill the uh, the water painters so much when I paint something like this you go through a ton of water so I like to uh, just have a little glass of water on my desk I'm careful with it oh look at how beautiful that is I just love when the color first starts to spread it's just so gorgeous by the way this is called the wet in wet technique because we're wetting the paper first and then we're putting our wet paint in it the nice part is you can come back and add more color you know as as you're painting and it works really nicely the other thing that's really nice about this also is that the watercolor paper Stampin' Up! carries is um, 100% cotton paper, which is extra special in the watercolor world because it really works nicely with um, the blending of colors and makes things really easy to work with. And isn't this just gorgeous? Okay, we're going to continue on. 
through the last two blooms. So the nice thing too about embossing images that you're watercoloring is it kind of creates an outline, almost like a stained glass pane. So it kind of holds the color in this image, which I really like. Okay. I also find that when I wet the paper down first, um, I don't get any harsh splotches. Sometimes, especially our ink, and definitely um, the red colors of, of our ink do this in particular, the different shades of red, reds and pinks, is you can sometimes get like stain, a stained spot where you can't, you can't work the color very well. So when you put water down, it keeps that from happening. I ho hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't, don't worry, because that's a little more advanced, but Okay, so I like having darker color near the base of each petal and in the center of each bloom, as you can see. And like I said, you can come back and add more. Um, like, oh, look at that, so pretty. Now, sometimes if you have a lot of water or a lot of color on your brush, um, you might kind of stain the embossing. So to do that, clean your brush off and then just kind of go over it a little bit. Um, you can also wipe this off once it dries because it won't, if it if it's on top of that, like this right here, you can see it's sitting on top of the embossing. But once the background dries, we can just kind of dab that off and then it won't affect anything. Oh my gosh, this looks so gorgeous. I love it. I'm very happy. Okay, uh, we have a couple of buds to color next and then we'll do leaves. And then I'm going to show you a way to really make your um, watercolor pop. All right, so let's do each of these little buds. There's another one on here. When I was um, playing with my my sample, um, my original, I kept missing the buds, which was making me frustrated. I think I was finished, and then I'd find another one because that tricky white embossing on white paper is a little hard to see sometimes. <laughs> okay, so I'm just kind of blending any spots around that I want. Notice I kind of tap off the excess water in my brush whenever I need to. You'll just get a feel for it when you start playing. Okay, so that, that's done. Now I'm going to close this ink pad because we're done with it for now. Um, and I'm going to pick up some Granny Apple Green. Oops, actually, scratch that. I'm going to water down my leaves and then do Granny Apple Green. Now you want to start in a place where you probably didn't just color the flower. And the reason is, and you can see it here, is it can sometimes bleed in and you don't want that as much as you can help it. It's not the end of the world if it does bleed a little bit, but you don't want your beautiful yellow flower to turn green completely. It's okay. Like I said, that little spot is, is fine because it's contained to a pretty small area. Um, but you just want to be a little bit careful because if the watercolor touches, it will bleed as you can see. But that is also the nice part about the embossing is it generally prevents that from happening. I My guess is that was my brush getting a little excited. <laughs> okay, so when I put the dark color down, I like to rinse my brush. So I, have, I can kind of blend this around and have lighter and darker areas on each leaf. And then some of the leaves have little stems, some of them don't. But if there's a stem, you can kind of throw that in. Now the other thing is if, if it's all the same color and you want it to be lighter and darker, take and clean your brush off so it's clean. And then you can kind of erase. So basically I'm going over that area and I'm getting rid of the color. And when you do it a couple, two, three times, it really will kind of erase some of that color on there, which is nice. Okay, continuing on to the rest. I, I like to um, bring this up closer to the camera so you can see. Oops, let me wet my leaves. Now this flower has a little stem. I'll hit that a little later just because I want to be careful not to get green in the flower part. 
Same thing here. There's just a little stem. Just wanted to make sure my brush wasn't too wet when I did that. Okay, clean water over my leaves. There's another leaf over here I'll do quick and we may as well do this last one as well. And I'm again being careful to make sure my water is staying in just the leaf section so that it doesn't bleed out. And it's going pretty well. So this is definitely a little bit it's not hard, like you don't need special watercoloring skills to do this particular um, coloring job. You just need a little patience. And I think that's where some people struggle is being patient. Because watercolor does have a bit of a mind of its own. But when you learn how to kind of harness it, it sure is amazing. I don't think any of you who watch my channel probably are aware or I think the people who watch my channel are aware that watercolor is one of my faves love 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 it and by the way I am actually working on watercolor stamp camp number three so I'm very excited about that okay isn't this gorgeous oh okay we're gonna set this aside and let it dry next up while that's drying we're going to do a little stamping so there's some really lovely sentiments in our stamp set. So we're going to pick those out. And I've die cut two labels. These labels are in this set of dies. And we're going to stamp and emboss those um, with sentiments. One's going to go on the inside of our card and one's going to go on the outside. Okay, so I'm just going to treat them with my little embossing buddy. This is just so helpful, especially on black cardstock. Okay, so one is going to say, holding you close in my heart. And I'm going to stamp that kind of off to the left-hand side of this label. And then um, you mean so much to so many is going to be right in the middle. And then, as mentioned, we'll put get these in our embossing powder. Ah! Well, dropping it in the powder is not a big deal. Okay. Get just a little bit more on the end there. That looks good. And then we'll do this one. If you do have some time between stamping and getting that powder on there, it's not like regular ink where it dries immediately. It's pretty, pretty good. Okay, so now let's emboss these two sentiments. Get my tweezers. Gosh, those are handy. So I think this card would be such a good get well soon card or thinking of you somebody's maybe going through a hard time um maybe a divorce or you know there's a lot of occasions these little sentiments would work for and gosh this would brighten some someone's day so much Okay, so I've got those two on here. And then um, on the inside of my card, we're going to work on that for a second. I, I've got just my standard four by five and a quarter basic white for the inside of our card. And I want to put this little label on here and, of course, make it fancy. So what I'm going to do is put two glue dots kind of in the middle center. And I'll show you where I position them and that way it allows me to tuck things in behind okay so I'm just gonna put that right there kind of at the bottom in the center and then our stamp set comes with some die cuts that you can die cut out these I just die cut from regular basic white cardstock and I can color these now because I'm 
um, coloring them on white cardstock. They're not going to be as vibrant. They'll dry much lighter, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm just going to run some some of my green on top of these leaves. I'll repeat that over here. Okay, and then I've got a couple that are dry, and you can see they're, I think they're quite a bit lighter uh, than the original. I guess it kind of depends on how much you had on there originally, but they generally dry lighter. Okay, so we're going to give those a second to dry. I've also repeated that with some um, of these buds and did that in our crushed curry, which I'm going to repeat over here. And I know I've got a mess on my table, but that's okay. And here again, you can see they definitely dry lighter. Okay, we're gonna give all that a minute to dry and then we'll come back and put everything together. Okay, these have had a chance to dry, so let's tuck them in. I like to kind of just position things where I like them to start with and then we can add in adhesive. Maybe I'll have that stick out like that. There we go. I think I'll stick with that. All right. So... <clears throat> I think I'll just do a couple glue dots here and tuck these in. Now sometimes that can be a little tricky with the longer stems and I even will take them off the stems from time to time. I'll just rip off the stems, just kind of depending, but that looks pretty good. And then remember, this is the inside of our card, so I think it's really pretty. I did want to add one little touch to this, and I forgot to do that earlier. Hopefully we can still do it. I've got a little bit of this checkered ribbon, which I think is going to look kind of phenomenal behind um, all of the colors we've used. And I meant to put this down before, so let's see if we can just kind of tuck it up in here. Oh. There we go. I might need to add a couple of glue dots to make this stick. But they're away from... There we go. Ooh, love this. And of course, we're gonna put some of this ribbon on the front of our card too, where it's really gonna be amazing. Okay, so there's that. And then I'll add our other pieces. And you know, the pieces I don't use, I always save in a little clear envelope. We carry clear envelopes in the catalog so that I can use them on another project later on. So they're there for me whenever I might need them. And I think I'm going to pull, I'm just going to trim off some of the stem on this just so that it slides in here a little easier. And there we go. Oh, that's the inside of the card. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. Let's come back to our watercoloring. Oh, goodness, it looks so beautiful. Now I want to show you something and can you spot the difference between these two? Um, I didn't quite finish this one, but you can see there is a background of pool party on here. And I really feel like it makes this one pop off the page so much more. So we're going to add that to this card. And I waited till everything dried because I really wanted to make sure I didn't have any trouble with the ink blending together or whatnot. Um, so I'm going to start with a clean watercolor brush and um, I like to do this on the inside sections the innermost sections um, 
first because that's where we want the color to be the darkest, okay? So we'll take, adding a little water to this, and then we're going to put that um, right in the center here. And you can even use the smaller um, water brush if you prefer because these are some pretty tight areas that we're going to color into. And I'm just picking these up so you can see a little easier. But I'm just adding some Pool Party ink to the inside sections. And I love the contrast of Pool Party against the yellow and green. And then this also just adds a wonderful um, background to really pop out all the things we've done up to this point. Okay, so now I kind of have the in the innermost sections done. So now it's just basically the edge and out. Okay, so for that, um, I'm going to go with a little bit lighter color. So I'm watering down that pool party quite a bit. And by the way, I wouldn't close your ink pad with all this water in there. I would wipe it out before you close the pad because you don't want to get water in the ink pad part, the pad part of your pad. Okay, so we're going to just, and I'll go kind of out and I'm going to leave a border. So I'm just going to kind of go around the edge, leaving roughly an eighth inch and it's not straight or perfect in any way. But I just want a border around. And then I can add darker color to this if, if need be as I go. But I want the darkest to be in the center and then it gets lighter almost to where there's no color at the very edge or just very little. And I just think this makes everything pop. So you can really see the difference. I'll bring it up close to the camera here in a second uh, from... The section that I've done with the pool party to the part that I have not and oh it's really a big difference so there's nothing here and look at how much prettier that is oh, it's glorious okay so we'll keep doing this till we get all the way around and then I'm just gonna kind of draw that border line out like so again it doesn't have to be perfect in fact, it shouldn't be perfect. You don't want it to be too crisp because that's just not what watercolor is. Okay. And then just fill in that color. And it's okay if it's not even, meaning there's lighter and darker areas. That's just fine too, because again, that's the look of watercolor, and I love that look. But I do want to blend the edges so that there's not like a hard frame around this. And that's one thing this particular paper is really good at. There's lots of different types of watercolor paper, and Stampin' Up! carries a very nice kind. Um, but man, watercolor paper just, you, could, you couldn't do any of this without it. It would, it just wouldn't work. So that is beautiful. Now we're going to let this dry completely. Okay, so let's start putting our card together a little bit. I'm going to close this up. And um, I've got for my card base, and I kind of went back and forth a bit on this as far as what I wanted to use color-wise, but I've got a pool party card base. And I started with a layer of black against that wall watercolor paper, but I thought it was a little bit harsh. Um, I wanted it to be a little softer. So I cut a panel of three and seven eighths by five and an eighth inch um, crushed curry sorry I really had to think about that <laughs> crushed curry cardstock and then when I add this 
that little bit of yellow kind of pops everything and then we're going to add some of that ribbon to really make things pop but I love the look now we got to let this dry a bit um, so give me a minute for this to dry and then we'll come back and finish everything off okay so our card or our watercolored section is all dry and so we're going to adhere it to that panel of crushed curry and because watercolor can kind of, you can see it warps a little bit as it dries. Um, and I did help mine along with my heat tool so that I could get this video finished for you. Uh, you can see I'm putting a lot more adhesive on here than I normally would put on a layer um, of cardstock for a card. But it really helps bring everything together nicely. Okay, so there we go. And I don't know if there's a right or a wrong way to this up, but we'll go with this. And I've got that ribbon that we're going to add to this. So here is our label. And what I want to do is just kind of position this kind of in the same position as our the inside of our card. And I'm going to tie a bow um, with this ribbon. Now this is the ribbon that was in the mini catalog, uh, the, the holiday mini catalog this past fall, and it's still available. It was carried over, so you can still order it. Of course, all the supplies that I'm using are going to be listed on my blog post, and there's a link in the description of this video, along with a partial list. I usually don't put every single item I use um, in my video link, just because it gets to be too many words, but... There we go. So I've got that bow on there and then we're going to attach this right over the top. Now I just want to kind of position this in such a place as to highlight my beautiful blooms but not cover up too much of the important stuff. <laughs> and we'll use some dimensionals on here. And I've kind of positioned them in such a way as I can add my little pieces to the background here. So I'm going to tuck these in like so. And maybe just put a couple of these over here. Actually, I don't know if I even need those. I like them on the inside of the card, but I think I want to just highlight that gorgeous um, outside instead of the inside. All right, I will pop this up. I just don't want to cover up any of that gorgeous watercoloring because it's so pretty and we really worked hard to make it look beautiful. So like I said, I will save the rest of those pieces for another card coming up. Now we got to embellish a little bit. I'm thinking I'd like to use some of these iridescent foil gems. These are some of my favorites. They just add a little bit of gold sparkle to things. And I think we're not going to color them on. We're going to stick them on with my take your pick tool. <laughs> okay. So put a couple right there. And then I can even put a couple in the centers of these flowers. Like so. And then I might just sprinkle a couple more of these around because this is just such a beautiful card. I'll throw one down there as well. So beautiful. Now my last step is going to be to spritz this with some Claire Wink Stella. Now I've thought about doing black but I just really don't want to ruin it. You know, have you ever gone a step too far in a card and regretted it? <laughs> well this is the card I don't want to do that to because it's just so beautiful but I did get a fair amount of shimmer on there so I think it looks really beautiful and last but not least let's put the inside of this card 
in and wouldn't this be such a wonderful um, card to brighten someone's day. Ooh, let's put that in correctly though. Oh, goodness. There we go. All right. Such a beautiful project. I hope you loved this and you'll give this card a try at home. It's so much fun. If you have any trouble, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm more than happy to help. If you could give me the thumbs up, that would just be the best. And don't forget to shop for these products in my online store. Your business means the world to me and I would be so grateful. I have some wonderful customer rewards that I'm happy to welcome you to and would love to continue to inspire you each week with my videos. So thank you guys so much for stamping with me today. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you soon. Bye.